Now, before we look at the individual engines and vocal synth, it's important to know about this pitch section here. This is the analysis section for the vocal part, which is then sent to the five engines. It's also where the synth element in vocal synth gets its pitch tracking information from. There are three range settings you can define here. So typically you can leave it at mid, but if something doesn't sound right or the vocal performance is oddly high or oddly low, you can try these two other modes. But for the most part, leaving it at mid should work fine. With the slider, you can hear the dry signal. Right now, all the modules are off, so we are hearing the voice unprocessed. But technically, it's not the dry signal. If you have pitch correction enabled here, then you are hearing the pitch corrected signal. If pitch correction is off, now you're hearing the completely dry signal. So you can also use Vocal Synth 2 as a pitch correction effect. Turn it on and set it to key mode. Now you can define if the key is major, minor or chromatic and set the root of the key. Below you have controls for the strength and speed of pitch correction. If you've used any T-Pain like autotune effects, it should seem very familiar. High speed will produce that T-Pain style autotune. You can also define a custom scale. In this virtual keyboard, you can define the notes that are part of this custom scale. Now, if you choose the wrong key here, the pitch correction will sound odd. I'll pick a completely different key. You will hear artifacts like that if the key is too different from the original. But that can also be used as a creative effect. Now, if you turn off the correction, the individual engines in vocal synth will get the clean signal. La, la, la. So depending on if, if you want a very accurate pitch corrected vocal effect versus a more humanized effect, you can choose to have this on or off. Alright, so that's the pitch section. In the next tutorial, let's check out the voicing tab.